if we include um, Parastrefia, which is this uh, sample here. And the nuclear ribosome morphology is not that different, it's also bipolarity. Then there's a couple of species that are outside of the nuclei, but the support is not good. Now, of course, the question is how does this nuclear phylogeny <coughs> is going to compare with the chloroplast and the mitochondrial phylogeny? And uh, we can see that they are completely different. So we recover uh, the green clay, but the green clay is nested in a clay that contains um, species from the blue group and other genera in the case of the mitochondria, in the case of the chloroplast phylogeny. So you can see that this blue group is divided in different clays that are sister to different genera. Um, the mitochondria phylogeny is it's interesting, it's single diprostephan is monophyletic here. If you include these two genera and then take out these species here. Um, but for me, what is really striking here is that there is high incongruence, and all these topologies are highly supported. Now, when we look at biogeography and morphology, definitely these topologies make more sense, as uh, you can see with the map here. So, um, these are mostly uh, Central Andean uh, species, and these are Northern Andean species that clearly um, uh, are separated here. So um, then the question is, what's going on here? So um, incongruence can be produced by incomplete linear sorting or hybridization and introversion. And piecing these two apart is a little bit tricky, especially with this kind of data when you have species in your tips. So uh, I went back to the literature and uh, used a couple of things. So uh, the first thing I did uh, was um, to incorporate the method of Jolly et al. So basically what they do is, um, when you have a case of integration, um, what you will expect is that the coalescence of the integrous gene tree is gonna, is gonna produce um, a taxa that is not going to correspond with your species tree, but then the genetic distance is gonna be really small with sister taxa. Um, if you have a case of incomplete linear sorting, what is going to happen is that um, the coalescence is going to be older than the speciation event, so you are going to have a genetic distance. So for the genetic distance, I use uh, the whole chloroplast, which is basically just one single gene, and it does not combine. So um, I use the program that uh, you only publish a couple of years later after he published the method. And what this gives you is a list of pairwise comparisons between taxa. And it's going to tell you, okay, these two taxa are affected by hybridization in some way. So looking at the list is not really meaningful. So then I decided to map the results onto the phylogeny. And then when you map the results, you can actually see um, that you can hypothesize better maybe what's going on. So for example, it's really striking that all the species from the green clay have uh, positive results on the species of the blue clay. So that probably doesn't mean that these species are hybridizing right now, but that they hybridized in the past. Um, so what we're looking here is probably a signature of ancient hybridization. Uh, nevertheless, when we compare some species of the green clay, but also the green clay, we can see that there is also a signal of hybridization. And this is also happening with our genera. So, what we can say here is there is a lot of hybridization. We don't know exactly when it happened and between which taxa, but we know it happened. Uh, another, word, another way to measure hybridization or to look for its signature is to use the Ababa test. So, uh, based on the phylogeny, you look for potential cases of hybridization, and then um, what you do is you, you count the number of patterns uh, in the phylogeny that are incongruent with the phylogeny, 
So the proportion of ABBA BABA patterns should be equally frequent in a scenario with ILS and not in flow. If these two patterns um, are significantly different, then introgression between the two tag sites is first. So I carry out a bunch of um, tests. These are the results. So you can see here the number of ABBA, ABBA patterns, and these are all positive results. And you can see that um, I was able to see integration among genera, integration inside the Eustephium group A, which is the green tape, and then integration inside the Eustephium group B. So, um, this is also telling us there is a lot of integration. So, we can think of this as a particular <coughs> pattern of evolution. Um, there is also morphological evidence, and this is a striking example in which uh, we see the signatures of hybridization in the phylogeny, in the Ababa test, and all the tests. And um, you can see how this species that we believe is hybrid has a vegetative morphology of Parastrephia, but then the floral morphology of this species of the Pistephia. This is really interesting. Of course, there are all the cases in which we don't necessarily have hybrid speciation. Uh, we believe there is a lot of chlorophyll capture too. So these two species are um, sister in the chlorophyll phylogeny, but they are distantly related in the nuclear phylogeny. So this species that is a tree in the nuclear phylogeny is with other trees. Um, so you can see the difference in the leaf. Um, and the flora morphology. Um, so, then the next question is why is hybridization so pervasive? Um, our hypothesis is that um, we believe that the, complex topo yeah, that the complex topography in the Andes promotes geographic isolation, which, uh, in which the lack of reproductive barriers in any stages of hybridization allows for hybridization. So, in conclusion, um, <coughs> there is a major role of reticular evolution in the diversification of the Pustephon and its allies. Clothes and mitochondrial phylogenies are compounds from species 3 due to hybridization <coughs> and uniparental inheritance, and the nuclear DNA ratophology is the best species 3. Uh, so, this is, um, this is really important because this is something to consider if we are um, basing on phylogenies to uh, separate genera or do biogeographic analysis. Um, so I'm pretty excited uh, with my puzzle because now I want to test some of these ideas not in the mountains but in the lowlands. So right now I'm working with uh, the city daisy. So this is a map of the different genera in South America. These trees are awesome, they have beautiful flowers. And I'm working with uh, Chris Dix, who's made a Scott Moran. So, um, next year I will tell you what I'm going to find. Finally, um, thank you to the Simpson Lab and then my lab in my, my two labs at the University of Michigan. Thank you. Actually. They do overlap. They do overlap. Uh, they overlap like in central Ecuador, basically. Yeah.